everybody. It looks like we're alive. We have a little bit of a different style going today because funny, funny thing, um, light switches can ignite on fire. Uh, I don't know exactly how it happened, but it did. And currently, I um, need to get a new light switch. It's a dimmer switch. And uh, I don't trust it no more. Not after it tried to set my hand on fire. I do have those cook hands, but um, not something I'm quite interested in. Hey, a little bit of elbow action. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Anyway, anyway. So we're going to really just try to keep it here. I only have so many lights. In fact, I got a little neon going for you. Those are just plant lights, though. It's nothing too fancy at all. Uh, oof. I don't have any babies to bring out for you today, though. Otherwise, I'd just bring out some plants. But I'm just uh, gonna, you know, be a creeper on my own channel real quick. Make sure that uh, this uh, voice is coming in all right. Okay. And it looks like we are golden. So we're gonna do some macaroni and cheese, and I'm really happy about that. We're gonna, well, I guess it's not mac and cheese. I guess it's actually gonna be considered a rotini and cheese. Let me bring up the recipe for you real quick. That way you know that this show is gonna be nice and quick. I am also, you know, doing better at already having the chat up. So all you uh, early birds to the stream, I'll be able to say hi right away. So, this recipe is coming out of the Good Housekeeping Good Cookbook. Just an old cookbook. This cookbook has been around for a while. This one was probably printed in 84, I would say, though. Plenty of good recipes in it still. So let's see. Let's see. The first one was in 1903. Let's see if I can find the copyright information here real quick. No, it's not going to tell me. Um, food direct. It was edited by Zoe Colson, the director of Foods and Cookery and Good Housekeeping Institute. Aha! Here we go. Okay, so. Oh wow, the library, of, the catalog number is even shorter, so I want to say that this was in the 70s or 80s. Go through a lot of books. Anywho. Oh no, the recipe! I closed the page. Eh, it's fine. We'll get this going. Anyway, first thing that we're going to need to do is actually preheat our oven to 350 degrees. I'm going to make sure nothing's in there. Alright. Perfect, and we're gonna go ahead and oh my goodness, that's two strikes on me. I didn't unload the dishwasher today. Tisk tisk tisk. So now I'm excited about this. I don't know if I cooked any pasta. And on the last episode, I was actually mentioning a bit about how. I prefer the way Alton Brown cooks his pasta, and I was also super excited because Alton Brown has been releasing new YouTube videos. I definitely recommend you go check him out. He is one of the chefs that I probably take the most from. Let's see, and then I'm going to need another saucepan to the same size. And there is going to be no knife work today. Uh, we only have an onion to mince, and I already have some pre-cut onions. So what's going to go on with that is that we're going to use this little food processor attachment here to finish mincing our onions. And for this recipe, the mincing of the onions is not a step I would skip because you're, um, we're going to be adding them to some butter, some fat, and it's really supposed to permeate throughout the entire dish. All right, so this one is going to be for 
my milk and my cheddar. I'm gonna go ahead and bring back that recipe. I bet it was on like page 350. American fried potatoes, going through vegetables. Nope, okay, so if you can't find your recipe, you can switch to the index. And this is stuffing. So, the funny thing about macaroni and cheese is that in the index for cookbooks, you'll uh, look up M and then you'll get all these main dishes. <laughs> Instead of you know, macaroni. L M N O P. We're almost there. H. Okay, macaroni, 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 macaroni. It's a very simple recipe. I'm surprised I actually have to. Do do do. Oh my goodness! Am I not going to be able to find it again? That's embarrassing. Ah. So. You notice that I brought my, started bringing my water to a boil, and before my water gets to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and add my pasta to it. Let's see, and I need 8 ounces, and this is a, how many ounces? 1 pound. Oh, math, how many ounces are in a pound? That's a good question. I think I know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. It's all bad, man. Well, we're just going to have to take it. Call that the good old eyeball. Now I'm calling this rotini and cheese. It's not the macaroni noodle. Now, this is a very important piece of technology right here. It's going to prevent it from overboiling. And now, also, what I did is that I added just enough water to cover the top of the pasta. I'm going to let that come to a boil. Yeah, I might like those fancy schmancy scene transitions we got going there. Super classy. But we got to make do with what we got. Like I said, I wasn't, I didn't want to just, you know, bum out because I was like, oh, I don't have lights. Guess I don't have to do a stream tonight. And I was like, nah, we can make this work. We can make something fancy. I also was just like, I really don't want to go to the store today. We've been getting plenty of snow out here in Colorado, actually. And, uh, fun fact, it's great to visit the snow. It is a whole different story to live in the snow. And also, it's uh, quite dangerous out right now. Uh, because it's, uh, there's all this ice underneath the snow. So I'm sure there's going to be plenty of of accidents. 405. Let's see if that's where I found this recipe. It doesn't sound familiar. Well, macaroni salad mold. We were almost there. So we have the oven coming to 350. We have our pasta that's going to cook for about 7 to 10 minutes. We're going to just throw on a kitchen timer for giggles. And then I'm gonna have my salt at the standby. I already have my breadcrumbs out here as well. And just so I don't have my hands full, I'm gonna go ahead, get about it. Uh, just a little bit of salt there. Oof, I'm not on my P's and Q's today. Normally I'm better about saying like an eighth of a teaspoon. A pinch of salt, two pinches of salt. I wonder if that's like saying four tablespoons. I think four tablespoons translates to a quarter cup. 
So I'm just spinning that a little bit, stirring it, and still trying to find that recipe that I closed the book on. Do, 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 L. It's pretty simple. You basically just stir everything up together. You take the breadcrumb crumbles like we did last time, melt it in some but separate butter, and then you spread that on top. But I would just like to be able to read back the recipe to you. Aha! There we go. 304. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go ahead over medium heat, start bringing this up to temperature. Now, I'll go ahead and show off how I have the little butter bowl here. So you notice that there's no top. What I do is I just actually take the wrapper from it. I use a little bit of butter so it can fit in my tray. And I just keep that over the top. Don't need to spend $20 on a whole separate butter bowl. And also, if you're really bad at eyeballing, you're, and you keep, you can either mash this out if you'd like to, but keeping it in the form, you see? How the water didn't boil over there? It's because of the wooden spoon. So, when it reaches this boiling, I'm going to go ahead and stir in my salt here. I want to turn it down from an 8, and I'm going to have it down at a 5.5. And, and we'll let that finish cooking. This is really good for eyeballing because you can put the tablespoons back on top of it, and then you can make a little indent. And then there's our two tablespoons of butter that we're going to need. Got a little bit of a smoky action going on there. I'm going to go ahead. And it's really nice to leave your butter out. Makes it really easy to work with. Now that I've turned this down, the wooden spoon isn't as... Imperative? Is that the word that I want to use? Alright, so we have one small onion mince. And kind of like mincing garlic, this is something that I find no shame in just bringing in over to the food processor. So we're going to go ahead one small onion we're just going to go ahead one small onion is going to be one small food processor for us all right this is really handy if you're uh, to just prep some cut onions usually everything else can cut up pretty easily but I like to cry and fry it so I go ahead and cut those ahead of time. So our butter has already melted, which is great. We want to get our onions in straight away. So I'm going to go ahead, bring my little stand over here. We're going to go ahead, get this messed up. No fuss at all. Nice and minced. And we're done. No shame in using a food processor. Now that's almost, <laughs> that's almost like a puree. <laughs> now with uh, something to remember when you, the finer that you cut something, the more surface area it's going to have. Yes, I'm going to bring science into this. So surface area, the more surface area, area something has, the quicker it is going to cook. So. These are only going to take about five minutes. And you'll hear me say every Friday on this show, clean as you go, sign of a pro. We're going to go ahead and rinse this out. And then I'm not really scared about going back in to the pasta water here, given this quick swirl here. We'll go ahead and rinse this stuff out here. All 
All right, so I'm going to put this straight at a five. We're going to be wanting to cook those for about five minutes. We have about one minute left for this to be have cooked for seven minutes. And why I like doing it this way is because it's more consistent, in my opinion, for the pasta. Because you have this boiling water, you're not using the same amount of water every time. If, say, if you, what I'm talking about is to say if you do it the, the, probably the more popular way is where you bring your water to a boil, you salt it, and then you add in your pasta. Well then, it just totally drops in temperature and it's inconsistent because you're probably not using exactly the same amount of water every time because who measures out six quarts of six quarts of water out every time. Now, it's also in my opinion that how Alton Brown will like say say it's probably a bit too much too much water. You want to cook the pasta as quickly as possible. And then I'm adding a timer for I want to change that to three minutes. The timer is going to be really helpful in keeping you consistent in your cooking. I'll show off what we got going on. Ooh, the white balancing on that. So just softening the onions. We're not trying to burn them at all. Uh, they definitely, that's more of a mince. It definitely got a pureed today. But that is okay. It is only going to help us. So. And uh, five minutes, flour, salt, and milk. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my pasta. We're going to go ahead and drain that and set it aside real quick. Got a little strainer right here. And put those back on. Now I know someone might be killing me. It's like, ah, yeah, you're putting metal on the ceramic. It's okay. It's not like I'm ch -ch 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 scratching it back and forth. Still, your mother might kill you. So uh, you didn't hear it from me because I don't need no angry mothers coming into the kitchen. These are this is my stuff. I will do what I want with it. So. Oh, we need to get that little bit of flour. Oh no, the flour. The flour. I hope it doesn't hurt my, my little computer. Where is my flour? Aha. Yes, I was so impressed with myself. After 15 episodes, I managed to buy a brand new bag of flour. So those onions have been now cooking for about five minutes. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is quality, quality cooking right here. Quality cooking meaning like riveting, opening up packages. That's what I want to see professional chefs do. I want to see how, I want to see them professionally open up a packet of something. Okay, let's see. We needed a whole, a whole what? No, that's the different recipe. We needed, do, 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 do. If I could read the right recipe. Ah, a tablespoon. There we go. Uh, and then, a little bit more salt again. Quarter tablespoon. I know, I know, I'm adding stuff, okay? We're working on it. So it's important also that um, you gotta be careful because these are little measurements. So if you have it like scooped up like this, you just have to be mindful that you could be adding too much or too little. It's a uh, good best practice. If I weren't having to work out with this little hole, I would go ahead and level it off. 
All right. And we're going to go ahead and get a cup and a half of milk prepared. I'm going to go ahead, and I don't usually, um, I don't cook, I don't uh, have too much milk in the house. And instead of using almond milk, which uses more water in the processing, I'm going to go ahead and use some oat milk. I'll go ahead and get a cup and a half. Ah, for some reason, I was looking for uh, my measuring cup in the refrigerator, which is pretty funny. So I gave my oat milk a little shake. I'm going to give it a cup and a half. And we're going to go ahead and add the flour and the salt and the pepper. We're going to blend these together. What's happening is it's kind of also, I'll show you, and on the light here, is that it's kind of all coming together. This is doing it after a couple minutes of the onions, and now we're adding in the flour. Now we're definitely getting more of a batter. It is time to slowly add in the milk. So we're going to do this slowly, increment by increment. We're going to rehydrate these onions a little bit. Add a little bit more. And we're going to break these back up. I'm going to go ahead and increase my heat back up to a five and a half to help my element compensate for the temperature difference that's happening right now. And I'm going to Slowly add in my milk. And this is what you want to be stirring constantly. So, I got it down to kind of a paste, and now I'm going to keep on slowly adding in the milk. And this is to help it not get too cold. This is uh, the reason why we're adding in a little bit of a t at a time like this is to you add a little bit, it'll warm back up, add a little bit. That way there's not, if we just add the whole cup and a half, the temperature would be all weird and it would take longer to thicken. I'm going to go ahead and pop out that little casserole dish that we need too. So... Uh, Got one. Oh my goodness, am I missing one? No, it's this inside here. I'm going to use this guy right here. Ooh. Yes, I only didn't stir it for a second and it really started to bubble on me. Now I think I still need to like... Uh, get buddy buddy with a couple of baristas um, I'm scared about like getting together with baristas because I don't have nearly as many tattoos as they do I was thinking of getting some of those Halloween sleeves real quick that way uh, that way we can bond <laughs> no no laughing at my own jokes And we can add a little bit more again. I added it pretty quickly because it was already starting to bubble on me again. And we're going to get to the cheese. And now I always have been say, saying, great, your own cheese will last longer. I ended up deciding to do macaroni and cheese tonight, or excuse me, rotini and cheese tonight. Because I have these packets of cheese that no one is going to use. 
And I uh, hate the seafood go to waste. So we're gonna go ahead and use them tonight. So instead of it being just cheddar cheese, we're gonna have some Kobe and Monterey Jack and a little bit of mozzarella. We're gonna get two cups of this stuff. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of cool. You can't see it though. What if I fry it out? Ah, look at that. All the ingredients have their own show. Don't forget to keep on working at this. See, now I know, I know you're all capable of doing this because I've seen people make boxed macaroni and cheese. And that's like, man, I feel like I'm watching like some French cuisine being made when I see people get down on a back on a, a boxed macaroni and cheese. The way they handle that sauce, the little wow, it's just it's something else. You know, I just step that. I can't handle that heat. And I'm making sure I don't. I'm uh, scraping the sides. I want all that goodness in. The ceramic makes it easy to do that. Constantly stirring. I'm gonna go ahead, there's two things that I need to do. I need to go ahead and get three quarter cups of breadcrumbs out and I need to get a, two cups of cheese. So here's another thing I finally almost Ooh, we had just enough, yay! We used something else that has been in my kitchen for too long. The breadcrumbs. All right, uh, finally, finally, be able to add in the rest of our milk. And we don't want to forget that dash of pepper that we need there. Give that a nice stir. And where is there? Oof, that was not very classy of me putting glass on a on the stove top like that. Back over there where you belong, darn it. Okay. I'm gonna try to use all this Monterey Jack first. Mozzarella is a good topper. I might just throw that in a bit on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and also get another bowl out. Turn off the heat here. I want to take it off the heat in just a moment. That was about one cup there. Get all the extra bits. And then for our mozzarella. There we go. All right, and again, look at all this mess that we made, as I say, clean as you go, sign of a pro. I actually even have a little extra. It's not always the best to use your sponge, but uh, they do got these fancy smancy antimicrobial sponges that you can use. All right, so we're gonna give this a nice stir. I was already thinking, oh yes, I was mentioning the baristas and the sleeves and the tattoos, and why did you want to talk to Bariso, barista? Why do you need to become one of them? Well, it's because I want to know all about milk substitutes, because man, oh man, if there's someone that deals with substitutes and, and can tell me how they uh, change when they're steamed and such, it's going to be a barista. And I want to ask them if there's any baristas in the chat here, or if there are any baristas want to leave a comment down below when I upload this to the YouTubes. Is if oat milk, when you heat it up, if it will thicken or if it'll clump. I know some will kind of like get gelatinous. I think that might be the almond milk might get gelatinous. 
because it's already been heated several times in the process and it can't really stand getting heated again. So I want a little bit more time. Get this a little bit, a little bit thicker. I'm going to go ahead as that's uh, finishing up. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take a little. Aha! Uh -huh, there's the one I'm looking for. One of these guys right here. I'm going to go scrape the edges of my butter bowl. Put all that to use. And I just need a little bit. We're going to go ahead spread this on the inside. Grease or ceramic. And a little butter really will go a long way. Sorry, coming back to a boil again because I never removed it from a, a, the burner. Or it's bubbling. I should say it's bubbling. It's definitely not hot enough to come to a rolling boil. Ooh, that reminds me, we need to make our breadcrumb topper real quick. Woo, that one. That one could have hit the computer right there. We got lucky. I wonder where that butter ended up. Okay. And then, and for the sake of using less dishes, instead of getting out a little saucepan, we'll go ahead and melt our butter in this guy right here. I'll use any residual heat. Now that I got this, we're going to go ahead. You can use a little bit of oil to um, keep it from sticking together. I don't find that necessary. You kind of want it to stick a little bit. It'll give it a nice form. Also, the butter is going to help loosen it up. So you can see how I just used, I didn't rinse off that butter right here. I just stuck it in here and got that all that extra goodness right there in the bowl. Now, while this is still warm too, I'm going to go ahead and get another two. I only need this down to a two or so. I'm going to take another two tablespoons of butter here and start melting that. Ooh, it does seem like I have a little bit more water drained. That's going to be a problem. Some water drained out into that pot. It's okay though. We made it work. Just a bit, bit more butter. We're going to add that to our breadcrumbs here in a minute. Now, we're going to mix the mozzarella in with our cheeses here, and we're going to slowly melt in our cheese. Just a little bit at a time, using it residual heat from another burner, letting that butter melt. A little bit at a time. A little bit and a little bit. Now you don't need the heat on while you do this. And this is the boring part. This is the part where every other cook would speed up or you'd go Gee. now. Now that you have that done, ah, but this is no cuts. You're going to see the whole show, the whole process. And we're going to go ahead. Now this, uh, this combination is a little bit uh, less butter to breadcrumbs than we did for that uh, broccoli casserole that we made. I think it was just last week. My, oh my, does time fly? And we're just basically tossing this real quick, just getting a little bit of butter mixed on the crumbs, and we're going to keep on melting our cheese in. 
Our mozzarella melts real nice. All this is melting in really nice. This is going very well so far. No complaints. And just a little bit at a time. Until we get it all melted. And you want to get this nice and mixed here. So we go ahead and turn off the heat to that. Now this is starting to thicken on me, so I'm going to want to stir it more often, or just not stop stirring it. That way I don't get any stickiness, and it's really starting to thicken up on me now too. A little bit more to go. We'll go ahead and be daring. We'll go ahead and add all of it. Let's see if I can get this in the shot. Hello, Amy and Bobby. It's good to see you. We're making some macaroni and cheese tonight. We just uh, we are getting saucy. Oh yeah, there's also a little bit of different of a light show because, funny story, uh, light switches can ignite. <laughs> and when I mean ignite, I mean fire everywhere. It was the strangest thing. There was no short wire in it or anything. It was the dimmer decided that it was old and it didn't want to work no more. And I was like, that's okay. So we have a little bit of a, a fancy light show. I, I desperately just tried to grab every light I had in the house. And heh, there's plant lights there in the background, but it kind of gives like a nice little nightclub vibe. So that's what we're working with tonight. So we have this all melted. We got the breadcrumbs working. All right. Now you always hear me say clean as you go. Sign of a pro. Little quick little rinse there. We have a little tiny bit of paper towel action here. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Take a little bit here. Go ahead, clean up our, our cheesiness, our cheesy mess. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and add this goodness, this cheesy goodness. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the ceramic here. Let's see. Let me make sure it doesn't say to mix. No, it just says to put it right there on top. Okay, and no mixing required. You just put, put it on in. So we're gonna scrape the bottom of this dish. Get all that goodness. Otherwise, this will just end up in the trash. We don't want that. Not all this goodness. This recipe again was inspired that I had some. Uh, I don't buy it, but there just happened to be a bunch of packets of shredded cheese in the refrigerator, and I knew that they were gonna go bad sooner than later. So I went ahead and went ahead and put it to good use. So now again, now again, this was a little bit less butter to breadcrumb ratio. Just going ahead and following the recipe out of the Good Housekeeping Cookbook today. Keeping it nice and simple, see what we get here. And the only modification that we made is that we used oat milk instead of regular milk. And we'll see how big of a difference that makes. Again, making use of the ceramics here. And this non-stick material to get it all in. And you saw I kind of spread it around a little bit here, a little bit there. And then I'm going to go ahead and now, from the top, spread it to give it a nice even crust. Just right in the wave. 
I do like the stream title for this one because this is totally, it's from an old cookbook. This cookbook right here is probably older than I am. Still useful. No electricity required. Oh, it's hidden. No electricity required. <laughs> no internet connection required. And it has an index. All right. So we got a nice breadcrumb topping. Again, yeah, here we go. Side sign of a pro. Then we're going to go ahead and put this on the top rack of the oven, and I believe, let me only say this once, 20 minutes. So we'll set our timer there. Now that is plenty of time to get our dishes out of the way and to make a little bit, ooh, you know what? We actually are going to reuse some of this stuff. So let's see, where's the rest of that paper towel that I just had? Ho ho ho, looking good. Thank you very much. Huh, I'm not sure where the rest of that paper towel went, but I'm going to go ahead and just get the breadcrumbs out of this quick. And we're going to whip up a couple sides. Now, this uh, macaroni, this baked macaroni, excuse me, this baked rotini, there's a chef out there somewhere that's going to shoot me one day. This baked rotini can either be served as a side or it can be served as a main dish. It really just depends on how much you serve them. And let's see, this recipe even tells me four servings as a main dish or six servings as a side dish. And it's going to be the main dish for us. And I'm not exactly sure what the taste is going to be like, but it's totally going to remind me of mama, that's for sure. So the sides, we're going to have to be daring. You know, I always like something green, and it's going to be between, ooh, you know what? So we're going to do, ooh, so I was going to get my sweetness from some baked beans, but I think I'm going to go ahead and have a side of peaches. So when I'm going to explain some stuff that I keep in the cupboard real quick. So I like to have canned fruits at my disposal. These make excellent sizes. You can even sugar them up a little bit more. I know the light is being super bright on it. So these are just, uh, I have a variety of sliced peaches or just slight fruits. You can put these in a dish by themselves in, in a little bowl, or you can actually just plate it on the plate itself. So yeah, we're going to just have a little bit of green beans in this one. Now, okay, we just cooked macaroni and cheese. This is as long, what was that, two minutes, three minutes? This is as long as you want. Uh, also, we took this off the of heat. Another very important thing, if someone else is cleaning the dishes for you, uh, do not burn this macaroni and cheese. Don't cook it on heat. Don't think, oh, I want to do this quick, and I want to, you know, just do it over the heat and melt it. That is going to make it a pain in the butt to clean. And this is something that I even don't want to leave just to the dishwasher to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break my rule. I'm going to go ahead and just rinse it out. And then voila. This is again with ceramics, how they're really nice. They make cleanup really easy. So if you are, I guess I would have to say, 
if you are living in a small apartment, not not necessarily anyone in the in the audience here, just in general, anyone's in a small apartment, doesn't have a dishwasher, I definitely invest in a ceramic set because the ceramic set is just super easy to basically wipe it out and be done. A, um, Hand washing dishes is always a really pain in the butt because uh, you really need to have, um, people use the drying rack all the time, but I really would be more of a fan of just having extra towels lying around so you can go ahead and wipe them off. That way you don't um, get the water marks or the spots. It just really helps finish getting that clean look. I'm gonna go ahead bust open these beans. That's already eaten up. Yeah, this is... I know that can open our action. Sorry for anyone annoyed by the noise. And then for this, let me show you. So... If, um, if you're really low on the budget, and then also I think that there's a uh, no- Oh! Huh. That one had some extra bits in there. Woo! Keep the cap on that one. Anyway, usually, <laughs> the rest of these came out of the dishwasher and stuff. Uh, so these ones still have the labels on it. That's a little bit lazy of, of me. Um, I'm gonna try a little experiment where I use some goof off in a large bucket and get a couple of these in to set that way. Uh, because what I've noticed is that yeah, you can you can wash these in the dishwasher, but uh, what happens is eventually is that uh, the label will last a couple washes and then it will eventually peel off, and that's something that I want to avoid because uh, dishwashers are really good at cleaning, but uh, I wouldn't want to introduce glue into my dishwasher. Or any of that type of plastic, because then I'd be a little bit worried about how that's uh, coating the rest of my stuff. All right, excuse me, the rest of my dishes. Go ahead and get that a little stir, and then we're just going to use the beans. And then I poured the entire cup in there, but actually, I didn't want to do that. I know that I already, I already know I'm going to put some of this away, and for the canned goodness stuff, um, I try not to, uh, for the canned goodness, I try not to just heat it once. Uh, reheat and stuff and it coming back down to temperature you're just uh, allowing bacteria to grow so just going to get that in the fridge and I was mentioning those uh, salsa cans before I got distracted about the glue and the labels and stuff and me being lazy um, if you're on a budget say you're on food stamps and you're really pinching every dollar and you really want some containers to um, store your food like we just did because uh, that works for everything that works for the onions that works for uh, this extra fruit that we'd have um, you can use your food stamps to buy salsa you can use your food stamps to buy uh, larger tomato sauces if you want larger ones and because uh, I actually the only time I buy anything in glass is when I want a new jar because typically I'll go ahead and buy like my salsa, uh, my sauces in the cans. And um, there's actually, I think it's the number 31 when I was looking, a uh, trending video on YouTube right now is actually going over um, how our plastics are not being recycled the same anymore since 2017. Um, there are still, of course, some high priced. Uh, the video explains it way better than I can, that there's still some plastics being recycled, but it's not nearly as much anymore. The unique economic circumstances that were 
happening in China no longer exist. So it's not profitable to reclaim that recycled plastic. Anyway, that, that long spiel was just to say, so I use these cans and then glass is actually just, you know, it'll break down and it'll eventually turn back to sand. But this is something really easy to recycle. Just rinse it out and you're done. And metals are really easy for companies to recycle because they can just use magnets to pick it up, give it a little rinse out, and that's how you do your part. So I just have, I have a little bit of side of green beans in here, and I have some peaches that I already have opened up, so I'm going to have some of those. Put those back down in the cabinets here. Alright. So that's just going to heat up, no biggie there. Get our cheese put away. Okay, yep, pretty straightforward and easy to get all your food, all your food fruits. We got a little bit, you know, we got some pasta and some cheese, which is going to have, what, uh, vitamin C, and I, uh, I don't think cheese is really actually that good of a source of calcium, from what I've heard from uh, those feisty vegans. Uh, what I have heard is that it's still a good source of protein, I believe. Let's check the back of the package real quick. See how much protein we got in cheese. See, now this uh, just goes to show that I'm not no liar. I really do like my blocks of cheese. Okay. <laughs> what? I'm looking for protein. Is there any protein in this? I swore there was. Six grams of protein per serving. Okay, perfect. So there are how many servings? 32 servings. So this entire block of cheese, ooh, how quickly can I do math? That's 12, 6, 12, 18, 180, 190, 192, 192 grams of program, protein? Maybe. All right, this is not math class. And again, this is where I'd say uh, for people like, I don't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily, anyone, I wouldn't say that people should go full vegetarian. Um, I think that just cooking mostly vegetarian would be good for folks. Um, and then also eventually something else I was reading, this is just me shooting the gossip right now, is that meat prices are actually supposed to be 2.5% times higher than they are. So if we're looking at, um, we're going to be coming into uh, a new age of different types of food shortages for a little while, and then it could get a whole lot worse after that. So I know the market is going to get shooken up. So I would not be surprised if our, the meat industry doesn't get subsidized the way it does anymore, and the price of meat might skyrocket. So. We're going to have a little bit of side of vegetables, we're going to have a side of fruit, and we're going to have our cheese and our pasta. That's a pretty well-balanced dish. And uh, if anyone is going through their seasonal depression right now, it's really good to have that good gut bacteria. I could use a little bit more of that gut bacteria. I'm working on it, though. So we only have eight more minutes to go on out of that and we also have pretty much clean kitchen at the same time that means I can sit down and I can watch the new episode of the Mandalorian just kidding I have to go to work right after this oh look at that we got seven o'clock top of the hour mountain time Thank you all for putting your energy back into people. Really appreciate y'all being here today. Ooh, we, I'll go ahead and real quick bring up the recipe that we were working out with. Ooh, 
That reminds me, I have all this coffee, all this coffee to drink, and not enough time. Very, very easy recipe today. Put some more of that, that white on that white. We're going to go ahead and close the cookbook. Dramatic. Very dramatic. I'm going to take a quick peek to see what's going on here. And I'm going to give a little tip about how we're going to get that nice browning on the top for the crust. We're going to use a setting that we should only use if we have a clean oven. That is the broiler. For the last two minutes, we're going to broil it on low. We're not going to broil it on high. And that's going to help. And we're going to end. You're going to see me sitting here like a dog, just like watching it, because it's going to happen really quickly. It's going to brown. And if you, you can't, when we're using this broiler, you can't walk away from it, because you're going to go from brown to burnt real quick. I make a pop culture reference right there, but I don't know too many fast people in my life. Kind of like a turtle, a tortoise. That's why I drink all the coffee. Got to speed me up somehow. So we only have five minutes left. We'll see if this recipe is worth its salt. I will say that um, the only thing that I didn't add into this that the recipe had was some dry mustard. And I was like, huh, there is a seasoning that I definitely don't have in my cabinet. What seasonings do I have in my cabinet currently? Well, I was listening to some podcasts recently about what type of seasonings that you should keep in your kitchen, and it really depends on uh, what you cook. If you cook a bunch of Mexican food, you should have Mexican spices. If you cook a lot of um, Thai food, you should have Thai spices. Um, Hmm. My brain just kaput after those two genres. I cook probably a lot more uh, Mexican style dishes. So I have in my cabinet, I have my cumins and my chili powder. And then I also have basil, cinnamon, turmeric, a couple of seasoned salts, cumin, some lemon pepper, garlic. Those are kind of the staples that I always try to have. Some extra, um, some extra bits, like if you like uh, making something a little bit more Frenchy, like a tomato basil bisque, I would recommend keeping some dried basil on hand that uh, when a recipe is calling for um, fresh basil, uh, you are welcome to use dried basil as well. No harm there for that. Unless the recipe is saying like you have to have Fresh basil. And if, uh, if I had a little bit more of a green thumb, these guys would still be producing basils. But when you grow a basil plant, you actually don't want it to flower on you. You want to trim it often. And it will grow more basil the more you trim it. Uh, basil is actually going to be one of those one of those uh, plants that I show, like people are always talking about like, oh, humans and natures don't mix. I'm like, no, humans are together on the nature and, that, and, and plants can thrive with the help of humans. Basil is a perfect example. It loves being picked. It will grow more the more you trim it. It loves being picked. It loves the interaction. It wants to be eaten. So we're down on the last two minutes. We're gonna go ahead and broil this on low. I'm gonna watch it. Where's my oven light at? Put start, yes, oven light. And I'm going to watch this. And so what the broiler is going to do is it's going to turn the top element on. And it's going to help us get a nice little browning. Like I said, like a dog, I'm going to watch this. And 
basement of the city. This is the glamour of cooking right here. Now you might be a little tricked by um, the fluorescent light, but this should only take two minutes on a broil. And it's also going to take actually about two minutes for this, um, for the oven to come to the temperature it requires for a broil. And I'm looking for the browning to happen. And it's going to happen in on the top tippity top first and once it starts it ain't gonna stop and this is going to finish because uh, I wish I could install a little oven camera in for you guys here oh I could have brought you close to the action too I suppose oh be nice to my camera today Okay, see I looked away and it's already really starting to brown. It's going to a tan. A few more seconds. Oh yeah, it's happening real quick now. Safety first. Oh. Arr, 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 arr. second ago. Go ahead and turn that oven off to keep the house cool. And let's see if I can show that. Now that color that we got right there only happened because we broiled it. It still would have been like you can see a little bit right there where it's still light. It would have been matte the whole way around. This gave it a nice little crust. And when I'm setting it down I'm going to use a hot pad to slip it underneath. Oop, come on. And that's how I'll have it sit on the table there. All right. Now it is time to serve. So I have my plate here. And I'm going to be super lazy about this because this is going to be one serving of beans for me. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just drain the water out of this. I just, all I did for that is I just, oh, come on, into the shot. Ah, oh, there's no light. Do it the other way. <laughs> so I just held my spoon like this, and then the water poured out. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the plate here. I have some peaches. fridge still. Now if you have uh, if you have kids, so I would look for peaches that are in a heavy syrup. They're a little bit sweeter. And then we're going to also go ahead and doll the peaches up a bit with a little bit of cinnamon. And then um, I actually have two different cinnamons in my cabinet. Right now this is the, the nice cinnamon. I use that when it's the only thing there. This cinnamon I would use if I, this uh, cheaper cinnamon, I'd go ahead and use if I were making uh, like a French toast mix because I'd be using a whole lot more of it. And there's other flavors like uh, the vanilla that you might be using. I'm going to just give a little bit of a sprinkle. That goes a long way. Let me show you how that. Uh, can we see it? Uh, not too well. Not too well. We'll get a close in the shot. That's what we'll do. see here so uh, come on focus for me baby so a little bit of powder on it 
goes a long way for the taste. So now we just need, now the piece of resistance. Hmm, very, very hot. Go ahead and use our pad here. And let's see how we did. Okay, so I want to preserve this crust. Take a second spoon here. Kind of get underneath it. Ooh, ooh, come on. Come on, work with me, Charlie. some things to keep out of the dishwasher. One of those things would definitely be uh, wooden spoons, cheese graters, and knives. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the shop real quick. Clean as you go. Sign of a pro. And there we have it, folks. Now, what we really got to do is the taste. So, we have it that I was a little worried when I decided the peaches instead of the tropical fruit. Tropical fruit would have had some red. It would have popped really nicely. Now, this, the something green, that was just uh, for the plate. And it gives a nice contrast on this, for the side dish here. I really like, um, so there wasn't as much butter in the breadcrumbs here. But I do like how... As I picked it up, it kind of actually made it really spread over all of it instead of just having like a crust that just sat like over here and then have all this be empty. We're going to see how this tastes. All right, so let's see how we did here. Nice and cheesy. The cheese doesn't droop down. It doesn't make it a, a, a mess to eat. I don't, uh, I know some people will think to throw like cheddar cheese on top of like uh, their red sauce pasta, but then they, when they eat it, it's just this long strands of cheese that end up getting all over your shirt. This is a nice cheesy consistency, two cups of cheese, ah uh, yeah, alright. Mmm. Wow, that definitely tastes delicious. Um, I also really like the rotini noodle. The rotini noodle really holds the bread and the cheese better than the macaroni would in my opinion. Now macaroni is probably a little bit cheaper. It's probably easier to buy in bulk, but this rotini, that's the way to go. And let me tell you, this is going to fill you up right there. I can already feel it hitting the stomach. All right, let's see how this pairs with the green beans. Mm. Kids might leave the green beans on the table there. Let's give a, let's, let's give that a little love. Uh, so never salt straight onto the point. Put it in my hand. Let's see if we made that a little bit better. Hmm, there we go. A little salt, much more palatable for the green beans. And now, the light little fruit dessert with the cinnamon. Hmm, when you bring it up to your nose, you smell that cinnamon right off the bat. I think your kids will love this. But I do know that some kids hate flecks of anything. They think it's like bad. Kids' eyesight's really, really good. They can see, they, 
see all these little specks. Kids might not like the breadcrumbs too much. So you could do the same dish and just skip a uh, step and leave out the breadcrumbs. And then you can tell them how you can get them to eat the breadcrumbs is you can tell them for next time is you can tell them that the breadcrumbs are for adults. That will get your kids to eat the breadcrumbs. And then even with the dish right here, when we were folding it out, this isn't going to really bubble. So you could actually even do half of it with the breadcrumbs, just half the red recipe. So you'd only need mm, a third cup of breadcrumbs and uh, one tablespoon of butter and toss it to get it mixed, put it on half. And then you can have, uh, it wouldn't be considered gluten free though. If you put croutons onto a salad and then you take the croutons off, the, the dish is no longer considered gluten free. It's uh, those gluten, those pesky, pesky gluten allergies. Woo! 721. All wrapped up. A little delicious meal. Hmm. Mm hmm. No, no cheese packet required. The bait is what definitely brings it together. You couldn't just take that sauce and and throw it on top. It would be a little bit too loose. Could probably add a little bit more flour. But that baked mac and cheese mm, 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 hits the spot for sure. All right, folks. Now I guess. Uh, it's kind of, I know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I think people get real skeptical on some of the, the things that I make, and then they don't ever see me eat them, and they're like, huh, is it really, is he just throwing that in the garbage when he's done? Is this a huge, you know, a huge ploy? So I got a little bit more time. I guess I'll update the tag to to social eating. Uh, whoop, I guess I just created a clip. When I finished now eating put social eating. Which I didn't know was a tag that you could have, but I guess it is. Another cooking episode completed. Mm. Oh boy. It would be nice to have a full table again. And uh, people at the dinner table. I come from a pretty large family. So, never quite as hungry without some company. I'm doing pretty good. I finally, uh, I finally, uh, like got used to the, the graveyard schedule. The, I tell people, like I've done, I've had to switch from graveyards to, um, the swings, the mornings when I was cooking in the 24 hour diners. So I already knew what I was in for. The, the first week when you sleep, uh, you switch up your sleep schedule. Not a big deal. And then the second week is you're like kind of dragging a little bit. It's that third week where you can't sleep and you just want to um, go back to your regular schedule. But I'm finally over that. I think I'm uh, down into like my fourth or fifth week of this graveyard shift. And uh, man, do I look forward to the weekends because I work all week and then I do this this cooking stream here. But I'm not I'm not a I don't want to change it up just to make it easier. 
because I'm trying to get uh, more people into the kitchen being like, yeah, I know, like, we're all having to work, like, we still need to eat well, though. But I do got stuff to look forward to the weekends. Um, I've been watching uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, which is um, a Japanese anime show. It's dealing with like um, cursed spirits. It's a really interesting magic system for those that like writing. And then, uh, of course, we got the season finale of The Mandalorian to watch as well. I'm excited for that too can't believe it's the season finale already i think disney only got like 10 bucks out of me because i'm definitely canceling my subscription now that the mandalorian's out i bet there's someone racking their brain over at D disney being like how can we keep people i'm like well hmm, i don't know man but i really don't have time to watch all the avengers films there's like 17 Avenger films. I was like, wow. Eh. When I'm sick with, uh, if I ever, if I ever get super sick and I'm bedridden for two weeks, I know what I'll be binging. Amata Anomi TV show. Ooh. What's that about? I'll take a little Amato. Let's see what we got here. Nothing came out. I got Ama and Omi. Hmm. Ah. Oh. I see. Yeah, on the Hulu, do they have a lot of the, the Funimation? I think, yeah. They, oh, yeah, they did add all the Funimation stuff. So you got, like, the Inuashas and the One Punch Man. Ooh, I wonder if they have... Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, The Ghost Files. That was actually... The Ghost Files was actually... Uh, my very first manga that I ever got and it's funny too because like I was so excited like I was going through this bookstore and uh, my mother had left outside and I finally found the I found the book I'm like this this one is awesome and I ran outside the store with it and my <laughs> my mother's like get back inside with that I'm like oh, 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 oh I was going to pay for it I was going to pay for it the, the shop, um, and then that's when I realized, I'm like, huh, it's pretty easy to walk out of store with merchandise, apparently. Whoops. Nothing beeped, nothing went off. Ooh, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah, Dragon Ball. Man, there was a, I try to, uh, I go on some Twitch streams, and there was this, um, Dragon, there is this DJ who's talking all this smack about Dragon Ball, and I was like, oh, how dare thee. That's like, that's like talking smack about the religion, that's like the religious text of the anime is. I've been doing a bit more of a, a quiet stream. I haven't been um, having music in the background. Part of that is because I stopped uh, the um, Black Malachite has been featured every time pretty much on the show. And I could get the audio files from him directly uh, and keep on doing the show. But I stopped uh, the Spotify Premium because it's been a couple years. Uh, on and off, like, it's not like, oh, yeah, I've been a subscriber for three years, you know, like, um, 
bills gotta get paid <laughs> sometimes stream gets shut down but after a couple of years you know you put a couple hundred dollars into the subscription and then you know you stop and you have no music collection you got no no favorite CDs that you can just punch in oh boy do people even know what CDs are anymore gosh Ooh, I know those laptops don't have CD players in it anymore. But luckily that stuff lasts a long time. Like the CD players, DVD players. Luckily any uh, CDs that you have, you can just punch them into a DVD player and you should be able to play it off the, on your TV just fine. Speaking of DJs though, since we're talking about kind of like the older tech, there's uh, this guy Faith in the Glitch. I like to listen to and he has like a different theme for his stream every day he has like uh, I think Tuesdays are his retro day so it's very like um, kind of swingy uh, more swinger type music but then he has like his synthwave day and I love how he has his stream set up he has uh, like uh, he'll have the old infomercials of like um, there used to be a separate piece of technology it was your uh, VHR, your VHS rewinder. So you'd have your VHS player and you'd play a movie and then you'd have to rewind it all the way. Oh, I was talking about CDs, now I'm talking about VHSs. You'd have to rewind it just like, you know, a cassette tape to be able to get to a different part of the movie. There is no tracking, there is no menu, so go to this scene. And then you really had it if you had the separate little, it was faster. It would rewind your movies in like a, under a minute. Take it out of the VHR, put it in. Anyway, he has a bunch of old infomercials, little clips of them playing, showing off the older technology. Uh, he didn't have the, the VHS, but he did have an older cell phone like those Nokia those Nokia ones not the big old brick ones just like the little smaller ones and I was like oh man yeah people are complaining about chargers now and I was like there's what like, used to be like 12 different chargers to charge your phone <laughs> uh. So Amy and Bobby, what is, if you're there in the chat, what is your favorite anime to watch right now? Right now, I'm going through Food Wars, funny enough. Oh man, Food Wars, just, I, I think that, I don't think it's Funimation, so it might not be on Hulu. Yeah, they might have the dubbed version on Hulu, it's so funny funny like like I've never been like big on anime babes but the way it's just like a weird cooking show because uh, they because uh, you know cooking isn't really like super exciting to do so like whenever they have the taste testing and stuff there's just like these funny things where at first I was like a little weirded out because like everyone has like these kind of orgasmic reactions and I was like eh, okay but then it's like they keep it fresh they keep it fresh still and uh, yeah the show is five seasons long right now I'm on the last season of Food Wars it's like oh no I gotta slow down I've ne I hardly ever go through shows that quick um, gosh I'm trying to remember the last show I watched. I would only watch it like one episode a week just so I could savor it because it was the first anime that I got into for a while. What was it though? What was I even watching it on? Put a pin in that.
Oh, let's take a look. I can't. I, I, I will definitely butcher how to say it. A Kami Gakil. Let's see. Ooh, serialized in Square Enix. Strong corruption in the city. Ooh, assassins. Ooh, it does look like a good one. I'll definitely add that to the list. I got the... Instead of Hulu, I have a Crunchyroll right now. Been trying out that streaming service. I've been bouncing around. I haven't been loyal to any of these streaming services. But I'm trying not to have more than one streaming service at once. I guess I have Disney Plus and I have Crunchyroll right now. I think, I wonder, people, I think like Verizon gave, I think Verizon gave like a whole free year I want for Disney Plus. I wonder if that's expired yet. Sword Art Online, I'm familiar with that one. Um, I haven't watched much of the show just because um, uh, I haven't watched too much of that one yet just because uh, I haven't been like the biggest TV person. I've been enjoying a bit more of TV. I actually had this like really weird quirk where I just like sit down and think and like I would just sit there for like half an hour just thinking about stuff and you know that's not actually very relaxing doing like that it was this weird bad habit that I had and so um watching tv is actually definitely like just turning on some tv has definitely allowed me to like be able to chill out after work a lot easier and I feel a little bit more rested so I was like um with the video games, with TV and stuff, like when I was younger, I definitely had that kind of beaten into me that like you're wasting your time and to not do these things. I was like, uh, I, I, you know, we're on Twitch here, definitely uh, uh, on the gamer, on the gamer spectrum. And so like my grandma was like, these things are pointless type of deal. But, With Sword Art Online, um, I'm familiar with like uh, the world, and I watched a couple of the first episodes, so I understand uh, the main character in the in the black coat. I don't have his name down, but I know how he like feels really guilty over what happened to his old party and stuff. Uh, why? Where I actually got into Sword Art Online, though, where I was really impressed was with Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. And again, we're talking about how, like, it's not very easy for me to get into some uh, video games or TV. But uh, the Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet, like, really hit, like, it hit me right in the childhood. Uh, the GameCube, gra it, like, it, very reminiscent of those uh, GameCube graphics. And uh, this, the controller lets you... Uh, it lets you play with a controller. It has, it's, instead of using uh, swords, well, it does use swords, actually, but it's actually a gunplay RPG. And I was really impressed uh, just with how fun Sword Art Online was because they took it, um, they were a man, what I was most impressed with is that they took Fatal Bullet and it was the Sword Art Online characters, but it was in the Fatal Bullet video game. And they expanded their universe. They have like two, they have like two shows. It's really good. I believe it because of how well, um, because they have a one, they have like the perfect universe. They have their universe in real life, and then they have the video game universe. And so their characters just go into different video games. I was like. Ah, so you can get some really cool storytelling in there for sure. Yeah, I'll definitely have to ch uh, to try Sword Out Sword Art Online. Now I remember too, it was the Yu Yu Hakusho. That was 
I watched all that on Hulu. That was the one I was just watching once a week. And, but oh my goodness, I still have to watch the last episode of Yu Yu Hakusho. I've been like perpetually mad because what the streaming service did is that um, I fell asleep one night watching all the episodes. So it um, Hulu did this weird thing. I don't know if it still does it. Uh, if you complete an episode, if you go to rewatch it, it'll like cut back five minutes before the end. So here I thought, I was like, okay, I've been watching this show like once a week and I'm on my last episode of Yu Yu Hakusho. And I click to watch it and, and, the end, and it's wrapping up the season. It's wrapping up everything. So the beginning feels like the end and I accidentally watched just the last five minutes of the last episode instead of starting it from the beginning and I was heartbroken. I was like, no, I wanted to savor all 30 of these minutes and now I know the ending. So I still need to rewatch that. I've tried to block it out on my memory so I can have my moment. Uh. Let's see, I wonder if I should bring back up little recipe here for a second as I'm self-loathing. Ooh, look at that contour from the shadow of the... Oh, nope, can't. Doesn't quite get it. Eh, the darkness is... Hmm. Peaches. Peaches definitely really help. I really like it in the combination with uh, the macaroni and cheese, having a little fruit, canned fruit, highly recommend, um, uh, uh, apples are, the apples I keep fresh though, I got them on the, the back over there, they're all waxed up, apples will last for like <laughs> a year or two, potatoes will last a couple years. It's pretty crazy what you keep underground. Let's see. What else? Food Wars. Definitely. And then uh, the next old school, uh, I would call them the old Toonami uh, that I'm going to be going through is that I'm going to be re-watching the Inuyasha. And I haven't decided if I want to watch it uh, with English. Uh, voice actors or if I want to watch it with the Japanese voice actors. Uh, the very first one that I got into, when I, I didn't know that there was like a huge difference for the characters on like how they talk or like what characters are presented between English and Japanese until I watched uh, Bash the Stampede. No, no, not Bash the Stampede. That's another example though. Uh, it was Veroni Kenshin. Veroni Kenshin was the one where, you know, in English they have a very serious voice, and then in the in the Japanese he's like more like, hey, hi there, how's it going, type of deal. And I was like, huh, that totally puts a more like carefree lightheartedness to him. And then the English was just he lot. It was when I finally understood. I was like, oh. You can kind of lose a bit of the character there in the translation. Definitely not one of those guys though that like tries to gate people, gatekeep people from in, enjoying stuff. I know there's some people like you can't watch anime unless it's uh, unless it's uh, subtitled. And I'm like, well. You know, some days after a long day of work, I really don't want to read my TV show. Like, there's, a, like, like, that's why I'm, like, on the fence with Inuyasha, because I'm familiar with Inuyasha. And I kind of, like, just want to be able to zone out, maybe, like, play a game, have to look up, see Inuyasha kicking butt, go back down. wrapping up. Mm. Mm. 
I've been uh, also just walking to work. I'm lucky where I'm uh, close by to work, but man, oh man, do I, am I happy I have a nice jacket? Like I said, it was snowing outside. Let's see. What, what am I cooking next week? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. Let's see. I've been doing really good so far. We got 15 episodes in, and I don't believe I had any repeats. I think I made tomato basil bisque twice. Um, let's see. Next week. Hmm. Do you have any... Oh, uh, oh shoot. It's Christmas next week? <laughs> oh, are we really at that, that part of the year already? Oh, my God. Oh my goodness, the Fridays, what is with Fridays this year? I don't know if you guys have seen my rant about Fridays, but I had, I've had a Friday the 13th, I've had the Black Friday, I've had uh, my very first stream started on September 11th, it's Christmas next week. Ah, are we having a Christmas stream? I don't know what's going to happen in the household, to be honest with you. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm kind of interested, I would, I would be kind of interested in going for like one of those Christmas Yules, except there's people that can make that so much better than me. I would totally muck it up. The first time trying to make a Yule log. Hmm. Ooh. Maybe I'll make gingerbread. That sounds like fun. Cookie. Yeah, I do cookies like a little gingerbread house. I think that would be fun. Yeah. I'm definitely glad that I got the macaroni or excuse me, the rotini and cheese out of the way already. This is one of those dishes that you'd actually see. Alright, this is one of those dishes you'd actually see probably served at some Christmas dinner. And you know, after looking at this recipe, I don't really understand why I've had such bad tasting baked macaroni and cheese in the past. Like, I really don't, like, the recipe is pretty straightforward. You, you melt the stuff, and you pour it over and you bake it and I just I don't get how I've had like how do you make bad baked macaroni and cheese anyway questions for another time <laughs> let's see so I, I'm thinking the gingerbread house we could have fun with that we could do a little make a little bit of cream on the side we could get Fancy with the dyes. Oh, I don't have any dyes left. We could use natural dyes. Mm. Yeah, I think we'll bake some gingerbread. Make a gingerbread house. Yep, that sounds like the Christmassy thing to do. Oh, and hot cocoa. I'll figure out a way to. I'll figure out a way to like try to make hot cocoa from scratch. Eh, or I might just get it in the packet. We'll do a taste test comparison of hot cocos. Yeah, I'm liking this already. Get me out. Oh my goodness, though, next week is Christmas. Ah! Ah, and then the week after that, it's the New Year? Oh, wait, nope, it's the first. Nope, it's still the New Year. Okay, so the 31st is when everyone's partying, and they're going to be up the Friday night. Oh my goodness, Friday streams, man. What's up with this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Hmm. I really appreciate you folks chatting a little bit. It's good to know you both a little bit better. You guys have fun. 
with um, the Hulu there. And if you get to enjoy some Mandalorian, enjoy that. I'm going to go ahead and scarf this down off camera. That way I can ah, really nom it real quick because I got to get my butt to work. Got one more shift to do and then I get my happy dappy weekend. And then, uh, oh my goodness, I didn't even mail out any Christmas cards or nothing. Oh, <laughs> hey, I don't know what to do. Oh my goodness. One week? Where did the month go? Where did it go? <sighs> Thank you all so much for coming in the stream. Got a little nice, well-rounded meal. It really sits in your stomach well. It's nice and light. Uh, the last week on the the broccoli casserole I made, I'll go ahead and just throw this in on, to summarize on the last stream, is that I added in some whipped cream. It called for heavy cream or whipped cream. That was a mistake. Uh, that didn't sit too well into the stomach. Like, it made you feel food full. Like, the head, I would definitely use heavy cream instead of whipping cream. Um, it helped, it lightened up the color of the sauce, which didn't matter because we threw in turmeric for it. Uh, but it made me uncomfortably full. It should just make you feel full. Like, and I bring that up because this dish just sits in your stomach really well. It doesn't, it definitely doesn't upset the stomach. Um, all this was really sitting well in my stomach together and that was kind of like another reason why I was like I want to actually eat the dish on camera that way I can you know give it the full Monty well thank you so much and Amy and Bobby for the support really appreciate you folks we'll see you, uh, uh, maybe we'll see you next week for Christmas if you have family plans we got the replays for you but I think uh, I will be here for the Christmas stream. I won't. I won't cancel out on that. I think it'd be a lot of fun to do some gingerbread houses, and uh, that would definitely give me a chance to like one up my baking real quick, and that would just be like a fun little artsy project. That sounds like a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, looking forward to it next week. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the stream and get my butt to work. See you all on the flip side. Oop, that's not the button I wanted to hit. Hey, I'll get good at this eventually.